This Hello. is Judith for Golden Skates. And I'm very happy that I'm here today with Karolina Kostner, five-time European champion, world champion in 2012. It's an honor to see you here, Karolina. How are you doing? Hi, Judith. I'm doing very well. I'm doing well. I'm very happy to be here. Lombardia Trophy um, in some kind of a new pair of shoes. Uh, I had a double role here, one supporting the athletes, the Italian athletes, in anything they needed, in if, if it was just a water bottle or just cheering them on in the background. And my other role was uh, assisting Kagiyama Sensei in Yuma's preparation to his competition. Um, it's really been a very big honor to be able to share my experience in any kind of way. And I think we are actually finding out what role would you know, be the best for me to, to be able to contribute and give back to the skating world what the skating world gave me. Wow, it's so nice to see you here in your new role. And I think a lot of people were surprised how this connection with Yuma Kageyama came along. Maybe you can tell us about that, how you got in contact. And... Well, mo mostly uh, I've been assisting Lori Nicol in her work doing choreographies with many different skaters. Uh, I really liked to be in the background and uh, to not overwhelm anyone. Um, so I've, we, I've been working on and off with, with Yuma on his now present long program, but also his past Olympic programs. Lori choreographed them and I think I was the connecting link trying to uh, translate, uh, maybe that's not the right word, but I've worked with Lori for so many years and I, uh, sometimes we understand each other without using so many words and working with her for me is a big, big honor and helping her makes me grow as a eventual future a professional in this sport um, or in this work um, and helping the skaters to be able to understand deeply her work and her choreographies and her ideas, her brilliant ideas and her dedication to skating and trying to connect all the things, um, sometimes showing it, sometimes laughing about it, sometimes uh, going to the opera and it, it's been um, it's been a very fun work and I can see we can see in Yuma that it's paying off and that he's truly growing as an artist um, that it's starting to deeply resonate in him to understand deeply the choreographies I can see that he also implements the movement with his own which is so important uh, we don't want to make any anyone's copy we want the skaters to be their own to have their own style develop their own uh, way of skating and this way inspiring so many people to do the same yeah and we could i could really see that he grew as an artist like over the last one and a half years when he was yes. not uh competing um but yeah it was your first competition as a coach I think along the boards um, how was that feeling for you a, a new feeling um, but it felt quite unnatural uh, I tried to um, be very aware yeah. of what the skater may need may uh, feel and try to resonate with that um, a, you get to a point where the skaters are ready and they need to start trusting themselves and trusting their work and being there to support them i think is a very important thing how do you reflect uh yuma's first competition and how do you see what do you see for him for this season i'm very proud of how he worked himself back from a very serious and long lasting recovery um, his patience and his never stopping to wanting to grow even though he was not allowed on the ice or just very few hours a day a week and um, the, um, the hard work he put in to um, improve other things 
and then use those things to improve his jumps and his skating when he was able to go back to training um, is very impressive and truly the um, as you said, I think we were starting to see him grow as an artist and I truly want that to come out because uh, he has it in him and it would be very special for the whole skating world to see, uh, to have it come out and to bloom. Yeah. And uh, do you also see him like being on top of the world again, like competing with Shoma, with Jun Wen Sha? And doing well for sure it's his goal yeah and um i see him very determined and very hard working uh it's the first step i think it was a very important one and not so easy for him uh but he did well and i'm sure he can build on that and that he can truly uh play uh how do you say in italian we say you play play with them in the game but it's it's not the right words mm. in english um, uh, I know he can, he can truly <laughs> find his place in yeah, with, the, in top the top of the yeah, skaters. Definitely. So, uh, will you be coaching him regularly from now from now on? We will find uh, regularities. Um, it won't be like full time every day, um, but nowadays we've learned to use technology as well. So uh, we'll be in contact for sure, and then we will decide upon what is coming out from, uh, you know, letting this competition resonate and finding, like setting the new goals for the short term and long term, we, we will put down a program and then work with that. Um, do you see yourself uh, as a coach for the future, like as your main profession, or will that rather be something you do on the side? Uh, I don't know. I will go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, what yeah. I'm sure of is that I truly uh, think it's a very special sport and I've left my heart and soul with it. And I really want to f find a way to, to give back and to find the best way, my personal way, to give back to figure skating. Yeah. Um, how do you communicate with Yuma? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I speak in, in English. If something doesn't come to my mind right away, I say it uh, in Italian or sometimes I explain to him what we use in Italian or in, or, or in English. His English is improving. We use uh, sometimes we use an app if we have difficulties or many times we have we're lucky enough to have an interpreter as well. So it's a very big team behind it. And uh, as we say, it takes a village. So it's not just me, it's a big team of hardworking people that make this possible. And we're very grateful for that. I think it's also a lot, you can also say a lot with gestures. And yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about yourself <laughs> because you had your last competition in 2018. Um, how did you discover skating kind of newly after that? Because we saw you do a lot of nice things that were connected with skating. Yeah, how was that? Um, I ca when, when people ask me what if I'm still skating, I, my usual answer is um, yes, I skate right from now on only for pleasure yeah. which doesn't mean that it hasn't been a pleasure before uh, it's totally not true yeah. uh, but really I, I enjoy skating I in, I, it gives me uh, freedom it makes me feel home it, it, um, it's my safe place and uh, in the winter I live in the mountains we find uh, wild eyes, we can be outside, enjoy nature and skate. Um, or I come to, to some of the training sites and uh, watch the others skate and skate with them, uh, teach skating skills classes. Um, we are organizing next week in my home region a little uh, seminar for young skaters where they can skate with me and ask me many questions and uh, spend two days together where we try and, and cover a little bit of everything. Um, but other than that, I have also been 
very thankful and very much enjoying my private life that has been on hold for many, many, many years. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've been enjoying that a lot. Uh, I moved to, to Rome, outside of Rome, and we have a big property with courses and wow. I read I, I mean if, if you haven't heard yeah. it yet I really enjoy being in nature and uh, yeah so trying to juggle things and trying to figure out what I want to do when I am a grown-up and <laughs> <laughs> yeah and supporting the skaters yeah you can really say uh, you can really see that skating is so close to your heart so I guess you can't imagine a life without it well um, I'm so grateful for everything skating gave me in the hard times and in the good times, in the happy times and in the sad times, because with every situation you learned something, something about yourself, something about the world, something about life. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, I always say I didn't, I never chose figure skating, I think figure skating chose me, so that I don't have really a choice, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we're back with Carolina, we had a small interruption, so we're at a different location right now. I wanted to touch a bit more on your own amazing career, because you had 15 seasons, you know, like 15 years you competed in seniors, and so many young skaters always say they are aiming for just that. Maybe you can tell what was maybe your secret or what would you advise to these girls? I, I really advise to aim for skating as longer because at some point it does get easier in some ways. Um, you learn so much on how to deal with bigger competitions, how to um, prepare your body, how to take care of your body. And um, what you learn in sports, you will take on in life as well. Uh, at least from my side, I can say that. And I appreciate all the seasons that I had the chance to skate. Um, you also, of course, had some setbacks, some injuries. What motivated you to always come back and even stronger? Um, there is a little voice inside that... Um, that tells you uh, you can do better and that you should always strive for the best, best version of yourself. And each situation, each life situation, you learn something new and you can grow from that and you can start from a new starting point. And I think that helped me a lot to find personal reasons why I do it, why I share my skating with people. Um, like, of all these 15 years, what were some really standout moments for you? Like, if you look back, what pictures flash up in your mind? Uh, that's quite a difficult question to answer in very short time. Um, maybe one day a book could be written. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Sounds like well, a good idea. <laughs> For sure, uh, the, there are the winning moments where it's it's a huge emotion. I think one of my personal favorites was ending my um, Bolero program at the Olympic Games, where I saw the whole corner where the athletes were seated that just stood up and uh, awarded me with their um, standing ovation and having that from people that really understand and live figure skating was a big, big, very big honor and for sure one of my special moments. Yeah. That, uh, thank you so much. That was a pleasure to uh, see you again. Thank you. Yeah. I hope to see you soon.